It's Thursday 4th, 5th of August 2010 and uh, we're looking here at the towering landmark of the town of Broxburn, West Lothian, uh, colloquially known by the locals as uh, the Red Hills of Broxburn, in fact there's a song with that title, but more uh, accurately called the Shale Bings or Shale Tips, and uh, Broxburn, West Lothian, the town's just down here, and as I say, this is a kind of towering landmark of the town. I've lived in this town for 39 years. Uh, these shale tips, shale bings, red hills of Broxburn are actually the legacy of the shale oil industry which dominated Broxburn and the surrounding area for almost 100 years from the 1850s. Uh, in 1858 it was discovered that Broxburn and the surrounding area sat on a, a bedrock of soft shale rock uh, from which oil could be extracted and refined and uh, a shale oil industry grew up around Broxburn uh, from 1850 onwards. Broxburn at one time was actually nicknamed Shaleopolis. Uh, I'm doing this wee bit because I intend in the next, maybe even today, but the next few days or a week anyway, to climb to the very top of the Red Hills of Broxburn and take some, tell some more of the, the shale industry uh, story. Um, and. Uh, also have a look down on the town as it, as it is today. Uh, it's a very, very interesting story and uh, this is a, a really, really uh, interesting introduction. I'm going to zoom back a bit just to give a, again a better kind of, uh, impression of the Red Hills of Broxburn. Then we can really see now how they dominate the whole landscape and skyline. Uh, you see them, you've seen for miles around. Uh, and they're kind of companions in that sense with Benny Craig, which I climbed a few weeks ago, and we'll see some of the same scenes from a different angle, a different perspective, when I do my climb of the Red Hills. Looking away in that direction, we're looking away across here at the Pentland Hills, and I say the town of Broxburn is just down, this is the road between Broxburn and Winterborough right here. So, much more to come. This is an even better perspective of the sheer scale of the shale bings and tips. Absolutely massive and every time I look uh, I have to think to myself how many millions of hours of hard labour did it take to dig the raw shale rock from the ground and then this, what we see here is the spent shale, the pinkish red spent shale is the dust that was uh, left over after the refining process. Now goodness knows how many million tons uh, are represented in these uh, shale bings here. Uh, absolutely massive. And uh, whether or not I'll make it to the top, I'll wait to see. I'm going to do a little bit of zoom again. Again, just giving a, a, an idea of the absolute unbelievable scale of what's sitting there. And believe it or not, uh, cyclists, guys on their bikes, go up and down. We've just missed one. Guy, um, the bit I'm, where I'm looking at right now, uh, uh, a motorbike actually went up there right now. It's quite incredible how they do it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to trying to get to the top and having a, a real look around and a look down on the town of Broxburn, which is just down in that direction down there. So we'll see if we can maybe do it today, but uh, I might have to wait. Sunday 15th of August and I'm back at the shield tips. I'm actually fact I'm a bit late in doing my climb but I'm just watching some kind of unbelievable stuff here the guys on motorcycles trying to climb up the the, the precipice in front of me uh, I think we're going to see something spectacular more spectacular than just a, a few minutes time here we go for another attempt this is quite unbelievable it really is I don't think anybody would believe this <laughs> Here another one revving, just about to have a go as well. Well, as I said, it's Sunday 15th of August 2010 and believe it or not, I have made it to the top of the shale tips. I'm looking across here at two guys in motorbikes, one at the very top who's obviously been able to get up that crazy incline right to the very top and one who's just kind of backpedaling back down the way. This is one of the, the hobbies in this area. As in, look around here, we can see the motorcycle tracks all the way on the steepest, almost like a perpendicular climb, it's unbelievable. But again, as we look 
at the shield tip from this angle here. We can see they're all around us. There's some more across looking north of the fourth bridge. Uh, bridge is just behind it. Uh, this is the sheer scale of the shale industry uh, at its height in Broxburn and the surrounding area. Looking around onto Broxburn just now, you can actually factor way in the distance see Cameron Ironworks, which of course is fond memories for myself. But I mentioned in the previous clip that Broxburn at one time was known as Shaleopolis because it, uh, the shale industry here uh, just completely dominated Broxburn and the surrounding area. Uh, and I'm going to tell a bit about the story of the development of Broxburn when I move to another angle. So away in the background there is Benny Craig, which I climbed. There's a guy right there going, going to make it all the way up. Yes, it is. Well done. Oh, well done. Absolutely unbelievable. Well done. We'll move to another angle now and we'll do a bit about the, the story of Broxburn and the shale industry. Looking away across there to the Pentland Hills. Of course. Here we're looking at it from a slightly different angle and you see these uh, telegraph wires down there. That's the line of the Union Canal connecting Edinburgh to the uh, Fort and Clyde Canal at Falkirk, at Falkirk Wheel. Uh, the regeneration of Broxburn from a, you know, a farming hamlet really began in the 1820s when the Union Canal uh, was constructed and passed through Broxburn. And I got another jag in 1849 when the railway, which lay to the south of Broxburn uh, between Edinburgh and Glasgow, opened as well. But the real transformation of Broxburn didn't happen until 1858 when it was discovered that Broxburn and the surrounding area sat on a, a bed of shale rock from which crude oil could be extracted. And the shale oil industry very quickly developed from that. Uh, discovery in 1858. By 1862, the Broxburn Shale Oil Works, which is just was down where now we see the East Main's industrial estate, mainly across that direction, here where we see the, the buildings, employed 700 people, and by the early 1900s, it employed 2,000 people, uh, and that's why Broxburn was called Shaleopolis. But in the early 1900s, uh, the and I mean when the shale oil industry was at its peak here. Uh, the extraction process uh, produced uh, crude oil, it produced paraffin, paraffin wax, naphtha gas, ammonia, coke, uh, and all these things. And they, 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 they spent shale from the uh, refining process was a, a pinky red dusty material, which is called the, the shale dust. And this is what the bings are constructed. This is the dumping ground for the, the shale dust and the shale bings. Uh, a, a, a testimony and legacy of the shale oil industry. I think I said before, the actual scale of these bings, and they're all around the surrounding area, is just so dramatic that uh, there must be millions of, millions of hours of, of hard labour to, to produce the, the shale to rock to, to create this. Uh, the decline of the shale industry here really started in the early 1900s when the discovery of uh, crude oil, direct extraction of crude oil, began in the United States and spread to the Middle East and the industry was really in decline from then and in a sense closed down in the 1950s when the shale oil works were closed down and the East Main's industrial estate was constructed. But uh, it's, uh, it's had a fantastic impact in its time. In over a hundred years of the shale industry here in this area, only 20% of the 200 million tonnes of estimated shale rock that uh, the area sat on was actual fact mined and oil extracted. That's because it became uneconomic une and couldn't compete with the crude oil extraction in the states in the Middle East. But uh, I mean without the shale oil industry it's doubtful if the town of Broxburn would have grown to be what it is today so it is really the landmark of the development of, of Broxburn. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that I actual fact made it up here today, it kind of completes the story, uh, of my knowledge anyway, of the shale oil industry in this area. And one final shot there of the, <laughs> the mammoth size of these tips, absolutely unbelievable. I have one final thought as I stand atop the Red Hills of Broxburn as they're affectionately known locally, looking around at them here, and I'm thinking about my mum and dad, and the song always brings them to mind, as I heard on the radio this morning. 
You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk in stormy seas. And I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Thanks, Mom and Dad. You raise me up to more than I can be. I'll always love you.